Wow. That's a big one. That's a big one. Oh, God, that's a big one. Hope he don't jump off. Wow. Wow. That's a big, big one. That's a big, big one right there. That's a, oh, he's got one hook. He's got one hook. He's got one hook in him. He's got one hook in him. He's got one hook in him, y'all. Yeah, go get the trolling motor. He's got one hook in him. I gotta be easy on that one. He's got one hook in him. He's got one hook in him. Be real easy on him. I mean, he's got one, when I say one, one treble hook in him. Hopefully he'll like flop around and then get some of the other hooks. I got a three hook top water. Oh, don't jump again. He's got, when I say one treble, dude, I mean absolutely one treble. Oh, I got a net. I got a net. <laughs> that is a good one. <laughs> That's a good one. Big bait post spawn fish. Big old honking top water. He had one hook in the bottom of his head, dude. One hook in the bottom of his head. Look at that. I gotta say, man, those Berkeley Fusion hooks, the real deal. That's the real deal. King Walker. Dude, that is a fat post spawn fish eating up on big baits big shad they like that big stuff this time of year first of all today's video is sponsored by the people at mystery tackle box so if you guys have not signed up subscribed joined the club got in the loop with mystery tackle box like what are you doing i mean really like you get some really cool baits in these things save shop with carl keeper requirements for contest entry so so if you look inside the box here you can actually uh enter in a contest with mystery tackle box so number one you catch a fish using one of the baits in this box right you measure the fish below to see if you have a keeper you see right here on the box it's got it needs to be six inches for any kind of pen fish it needs to be 12 inches for a trout 14 inches for a bass 16 inches for a walleye and 18 inches for absolutely everything else you lay it on top of the box um, it says share a picture of your fish on Instagram using the hashtag MTB Keeper. Uh, if you get Mystery Tackle Box, make sure you show, take a picture with the fish and your box um, and then tag, I'm sorry, what is it? Hashtag MTB Keeper. Do that when you get your box. Show people what we're catching fish on. Tag, tag me if you want to. I don't care. I want to see your fish too. Post spawn fishing. What should you be throwing? What should it look like? I'm going to tell you something. Probably one of the only times you'll ever hear me say this. This time of the year, I, I throw my, I put my spinning rods up. Don't really use my spinning rods that much at all. Don't need them. When you pull out, when I pull out my spinning rods this time of year, when I know the fish have finished spawning and they're starting to move into those, those post-spawn little intercepts, little highways, I get my butt kicked. I really do. I get. I, I've really analyzed that over the years. When I when I pick up my spinning rods during the post spawn, I get my butt kicked a lot. So I try to shy away from it. You notice in my videos, you'll see a transition for about two to three weeks where I don't I don't use very many spinning rods very much at all. I'm gonna tell you why. Um, during the post spawn, fish like big stuff. They like big baits, and they get in very specific areas. During the springtime of the year, you'll see me with that spinning rod and a Ned Rig and a Wacky Rig, Nikos, uh, Float Worms. You'll see me with that quite often, right? But when we get towards the, the post spawn, there's not as many fish scattered throughout the waterway. There's, they're, they're just not. During the springtime of the year, you can go in just about any pocket and there's a few, a few to a fish or a fish to a few fish and just about everywhere you look behind me. You can go just about any point, any bank over there that's got red clay on it, probably catch a fish. 
But when you get to May, June, when the fish have done spawning, they start to move out, it's not that easy anymore. If you live in the Southeast, you know exactly what I'm talking about. It's not as easy to catch a fish in May, June, and July just sucks, right? Everybody knows that July just flat out sucks. Not as easy to catch a fish. That being said, I've got to cover more water. Spinning rods, traditionally, they're easier to fish with when you're fishing slower. You're fishing lighter baits, takes them longer to get to the bottom, all right? So it takes more time to fish them. So what I've learned to do that's really helped me during the post spawn is to upsize my baits and use baits that I can move very quickly with. Thought I heard some fish schooling behind me, but it was just wave activity. So I'm going to show you. There's two in particular. There's really, there's really three here on my deck that I, that I was probably four, four baits. But we're going to really, really harp on two that I think are really good for you. Uh, I think the, I think this is something that you could talk about using pretty much anywhere you go. Uh, a top order. When I, when I pull out my top orders during the post spawn, get them big, honky, big, hoss daddy, like bodacious style top orders. This one I'm throwing right here, this is actually a Berkeley Cane Walker. It's a big old, what they did is pretty much they remade the shower blow from Evergreen or something sort of like a pencil popper. You guys from the Carolinas and Georgia, I know you know what a pencil popper is. But that's an old school saltwater bait that we started fishing in and fresh water for spotted bass on heron lakes. This bait is probably, I don't know the exact dimensions, it's somewhere between five and six inches long. It's got three hooks in it and it weighs about as much as a cell phone. It's about how much it weighs. So a big whopping top water. That's one of my favorites. We'll go into the setup and talk about where, how, where I like to use it here in just a bit. So I use a big top water and a swim bait. Now, when you're talking about swim baits, I don't like to get crazy with all that seven, eight, nine, ten, ten inch swim baits. Of course, fish bite those. You've seen people catch fish on those. My mind is always, the way I explain to you guys these baits is always through the lens of a tournament fisherman. And those big seven, eight, nine, ten inch swim baits do catch fish, but I don't look at them as tournament baits i look at them as novelty baits uh i don't think anybody's ever won a tournament wire to wire on a you know eight inch swim bait major tour level tournament there's maybe one or two out there i'm sure somewhere i'm sure a guy has thrown in one or two fish during the tournament on there but i don't think it's been a major major factor but in just a few events so i have to play the percentages games and i've talked to you guys about this in one of my swim bait videos before i think three, four, five, six inch swim baits. If you've got that category, three to six inch, is where the bulk of your bass are gonna be caught. Now I know somebody's gonna go in the comments say, in section and say, well, I weigh 36 pounds on an eight inch, whatever, good for you. That's just not a weekend, every week, day in, day out deal. I really truly believe three to, inch, three to six inch swim baits is where it goes down at for the majority of your swim bait bite. I like to throw on the bigger side, a five, this is a five inch Z-Man diesel minnows. I throw the five inch diesel minnows, I throw the big old top water, all right? Big baits, I like this one. Even though I'm gonna be fishing shallow, like today I'm fishing super shallow, right? Two to eight foot over top of slopes, you know, slow tapering red clay points, which is where herons spawn, which is where the bass move after they spawn. It's like this phenomenon where the shad move up to spawn on the points, which are usually on the main lake, right when the bass are moving out of the pockets towards the main lake during the post spawn. So it's just, it's just, a, just, just God worked it out awesome so that bass can eat very easily during the spring. And I'm fishing it shallow, but I'm throwing it still on a three quarter ounce head for a couple of reasons. Three quarter ounce head, throw it out there. I can bomb it from a long way. These points are slow tapering points and it can be really hard to cast as far as you need to because a lot of fish are gonna be schooling and I wanna put my boat in position and if they come up, I can reach them. But sometimes even no matter how good I position my boat, I still have to get that bait 
a long way away from the boat. So I need a heavy head. Other reason is they just seem to bite it better when it's digging down on the bottom. I'll throw it up there in two foot of water with three quarter ounce head and, and just grind it on the bottom. Just doop, doop, doop. You'll feel it. Doop, 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 doop. That's when he's got it. So they just bite it better. They don't bite this bait very well up high in the water column. They really seem to like it down. So that's why I throw this five inch diesel minnows, three quarter ounce jig head. This particular head is called a, I think a redfish eye by Eye Strike. Z-Man sells it as well. And I think I, I sell it in my, um, my jig head kit on my website. That's two great baits to use during the post spawn of the year when they're on the heron spawn. Big baits, big attention. You can fish them fast, all right? That's why I throw it on such big head. Throw it a long way, reel it really fast. Uh, if he's there, he gets it. If he's not, I go on and move to the next spot. That's why I like to use it. The same thing with the top water. You see, this is a big top water. I, I made reference to it just a little bit ago. This, this Berkeley Cane Walker, it feels like you're trying to throw your cell phone across that point. Big bait, it gets their attention. They don't want small shad when they come off the beds. When they come off the beds, they want big bait. Their, their, their metabolism's high. The water, you gotta remember, a bass is cold blooded. So the water temperature is starting to get warmer, 65, 68, 70 degrees. Their metabolism is a lot higher. They need to eat. So they're gonna use that energy on a bigger bait to eat the biggest shad they find in the school much quicker than they will that small shad like they do in the winter time when the water's cool, their metabolism's lower and they can digest a smaller shad a lot easier than they can. It doesn't take as much energy from them to, uh, to digest a smaller shad. But this time of year, they eat big stuff and they want the big stuff. And you will get flat out ignored fishing here in Georgia, South Carolina, probably even North Carolina, throwing those smaller baits this time of the year because fish don't want that. They want big stuff. So don't be scared. Even if you live on a body of water, let me tell you, I have this, I have a hard time with this as well. When you fish on a lake like this one, you know, a 13, 14 pound day is a good day. We don't have a lot of big fish here. So sometimes I shy away from using those bigger baits, bigger top waters, bigger soft plastics. But this is that time of year where you can throw a big bait with confidence is during the post spawn of the year. It doesn't matter the size of fish you have. If you guys live on a spotted bass fishery where, you know, a 10, 12 pound bag of fish is, you know, it's not that easy to catch. 14, 15 pounds is like an excellent day. Like that's this lake and I'm throwing big baits. They eat big baits this time of year. So don't let the size of fish in your particular body of water discourage you when those fish have moved off the bed from throwing bigger baits. They like big stuff and that's what they wanna eat. Let me get out of the water and show you exactly what I'm looking for when I'm trying to find these post spawn fish on a swim bait and a big old bodacious honking top water like that right there. Big swim bait. Say a big one, five inch swim bait. Throwing it up on the shoulder now. You see, he ate it. Dude ate it. Five inch swim bait. They like bigger baits during the during the post spawn. All right, this is a very good example of like what I like to look for during the post spawn. Now you look behind me, main lake, right? This is the main lake behind me. And right around the corner, that corner, is a creek, a long creek, all right? A long creek, I'll show it to you on the map here. First point coming out of that long creek, very long point that runs way, way, way out here. It runs way out, way almost out to the middle of the river channel. But you can see, I don't know, I think you guys can tell on the camera how that is red. It's very clear water. The water is, water visibility, I'm sitting in... I'm sitting in about eight foot and I can see the bottom. I can see like every once in a while, I'll make out a stump or something right here. And you can see right over here is red bottom. This is where the herring spawn on this lake or the bait fish forage. Herring is just the, the bait fish forage that we have here. This is the area that I throw my baits on right here. So I'll take my swim bait and I'll throw it all the way to the bank over there. All the way, all the way to the bank. I'm gonna throw it where I see red. 
that's where the heron spawn they don't spawn out here in five six foot of water we don't have a lot of bushes we don't have a lot of things in the water for fish to spawn on so this is what they spawn on these long points that have red clay on them so this time of year i'll spend you know i'll spend a good bit of time you can find these places that i'm that i'm pointing at right here you don't even actually have to be on the water so if you're going to a new body of water or say you're coming to south carolina georgia you don't really have to 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 have prior experience on that body of water i find them in new places all the time uh, but you can sit at home and find these long points that are coming out of creeks here you can see the creek is here i'm going to show you on the map on my garmin here mapping is super important it's almost like my sonar and all my pan optics it doesn't really matter right now right now what i'm using is my map system more than anything because even though i'm here on the lower end of the lake i can look up river and see where the long points are see where the islands are that stuff is super important this time of year so i'll spend just as much time just looking once i find out that the herring is actually spawning and i find out that you know the fish are on top water and they're on points i just ride around looking for the right places let's look at this little place right here this is a perfect place sometimes they get on long main lake points like what i just showed you but they'll also get off on the sides on these little secondary main lake points it's like it's a it's a point but it's a little flat off the side of a point i'm gonna show you one right here in front of me see some of the you can see some of the shading here i'm gonna go to just my map and let's go to charts fishing charts and see i have i have one foot contours here but what all i'm looking for when i zoom out of my map you see how there's there's a long creek you see that creek all that all these fish that have spawned back in here they're going to go to some stopping point right they're going to go somewhere around this island they're going to go around this point right here or they're going to go way out here to this point that goes way out in the middle of the river those are the kind of places you're looking for if you, if you scroll over here you see i'll find a creek whatever the biggest creek is right so you see this long chute coming off right here somewhere every bass that spawned in this long creek right here is going to stop somewhere out here close to the main lake it may go here they may go there they may go there um, they may even cross the river and go over here to this island right here on the tip of this island but anywhere there's an intersect or anywhere that the first stop coming out of a main creek like that a long creek you can see this one right here look at that look see how long creek i get there's one thousand percent guarantee that there was fish spawn in this pocket right here and they're going to stop right here they're going to stop on this right here something like that so your job is when you're fishing throughout the day is to figure out which one of these points that they're gonna they're gonna stop on this one right here is just a moderate fast action seven foot medium heavy it's not not a big stick at all it's not stiff and it's not big it's got enough backbone to it that i can throw a bait like this it's plenty stiff enough that i can throw a bait like this i can see just a little flip of my wrist dude i cast that thing it was i already cast it 60 yards just with the flick of the wrist just like that so you know you want something where you can get the bait out there but it, like you see this i got to do that all day that doesn't seem like much but it can put a whooping on your wrist so i don't want a huge rod because it's just going to wear me out the other thing is you don't want a rod that's too stiff you got three hooks on that bait and the fish almost never have it in their mouth almost never have it in the mouth they get they're just trying to kill it and come back and eat it later so uh you know something a little soft so if you get one skin hooked and filed on you know on the fins or hooked in the tail or hooked under the head how they like to do with a top order you don't pull that hook out so you need something pretty soft uh fast reels again post spawn need to cover water fast reel fast reel both presentations i want to bring it back hurry up make the next cast they're ready to eat they're not sitting on the point thing oh my god i don't want to eat today they, they're like they're sitting on that point they're like i wish a bait fish would swim across my face today he is going to get lips laid to him so i want a big i want a fast reel dude i want i want a real fast reel 8 3 to 1 gear ratio reel this one this particular one right here is a tournament lose tournament pro that i'm using and i'm throwing on 30 pound test braid 30 pound test braid takes out that fatigue you can see i can work my top water perfectly setting down usually i have to you know you got to be up in the right position to work your top water not with braid 30 pound test small diameter lets the bait get out there that line peels off there real fast 
smaller diameter less friction as it's exiting your rod you can throw the line faster so i'll throw it farther so 30 pound test uh strike king pro grade floor carbon you see how good i'm getting this thing strike king remember when i first started doing these videos it was strike cream you're real good at that so strike king pro grade braided line killing it today throw it out there and just work it fast as you can you don't work it slow don't work it slow. Throw it out there. Postpone. They want to eat. Don't give them time to look at it. Pop, 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 pop. Bring it back to the boat. All right. So fast reel, thirty pound test. Um, pick your rod, whatever works best for you. This is the Pro Series, the Pro Battle Series that we're gonna have. That all the pros at Favorite Design, seven foot medium heavy action. Maybe you want one longer. Knock yourself out, good buddy. That's fine with me. We use something that's got a little bit of tip to it, but you do need some backbone to be able to throw it because this is a heavy bait. Let's look at the let's look at the swim bait setup. So swim bait setup's a little different. Longer rod. This is a 7.3 medium heavy. This is the favorite rush that I'm throwing this guy on right here. Oh, I didn't give you a substitute. If you guys are looking for a substitute for the Pro Battle series that you can get your hands on right now, I probably would suggest the seven foot medium heavy defender series. That would be a good one. That's pretty compatible to that rod right there. Sorry, I missed that. Back to the swim bait. A little different setup. Well, it's actually polar polar opposite setup that we got here. I am still throwing a Lose Tournament Pro, uh, the 831 gear ratio reel here, but my line and my rod is just pretty much totally different. All right, seven three, seven three. Actually, I lied to you. Seven three heavy action rush is what this guy is, uh, and I'm going to throw it on 15 pound test fluorocarbon. Now that is a little bit. That's a little heavy. Uh, of a bait for 15 pound test because you're trying to whip it and throw it a long way but that very reason is why i'm using the the 15 pound test fluorocarbon a little smaller diameter get that bait way out there smaller diameter remember you'll be able to cast it better and if it's kind of windy uh you know it's just easier for that it laid the line smaller diameter lays down on the water a little bit better so seven three heavy action favorite uh rush Lose Tournament Pro 8 3 to 1, 15 pound test Strike King fluorocarbon. Listen to me talking good today. Three quarter ounce jig head, five inch diesel minnows. So keep it simple during the post spawn. Get you a couple big baits, put your spinning rods down for a while. You don't even have to use them. A lot of people think I like spinning rods a lot because you see me fishing with them a lot. And I do like spinning rods, but I'd much rather catch them on 30, 50 pound test braid and just knock their lights out is what i would rather do but given where i live there's only little small windows of where i can really throw big baits like what you see today and catch fish and right now is one of them during the post spawn that's the time to do it 